Hello guys, so in this video I want to continue doing problem uh, from Stuart Multivariable Calculus and now we'll do problem number 11 and for problem, problem number 11 what we're given we want to figure out a change of variables such that uh, I'm going to choose some region S uh, in the coordinate system U and V and I'm going to, I need to find the uh, change of variables X in terms of U and V and Y in terms of U and V such that I'm going to obtain the region which is given by uh, region R, which is given by uh, those equations. So the boundaries of the region R is going to be lines uh, y is equal to x minus 1, is it, uh, y is equal to 2x plus 1, 1 minus x, and 3 minus x. So what should you do first? First you try to visualize what is your region R by sketching those four lines. So let's sketch the first line uh, y is equal to 1 minus x. So y minus x means that your line is going to pass through the point 1 and minus x means negative slope. So my line is going to look something like this. Then I have 3 minus x. So it's going to be the same line which is shifted by 2 units up. So I'm going to have lines that look something like this. Okay, perfect. We have two lines. The next line is 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1 means that I'm going to have intersection with y axis at the point negative 1 and that, that my line is going to have slope 2. So slope 2 means uh, if I'm going to shift by one unit to the right then by how many units do I need to go up? I need to go up by two units. So I will know that my line is going to intersect at this point and at this point. So my line is going to look something like this. And that same happens for uh, 2x plus 1 where I'm going to take the same line and shift this line just by two units up. So in this case, this point is going to move by two units up and this point is also going to move by two units up. So what I'm going to obtain, I'm going to obtain this line. And then you can see right now we have four lines and the region R is going to be the region which is going to be enclosed within those four lines. So in other words, so in other words my region R is going to be this region over here. Okay, so uh, first we can see that our region is going to be kind of rectangular shape. Let's try to figure out uh, the intersection points. And to figure out the intersection points, I'm going to name them just A, B, C, and D. And you can see, so for example, I'm going to show you how to figure out the coordinate for point A. No, let's do for point, for point B. Uh, and then you, you can use the same approach to figure out all other points. For, for, so for the point B, my intersection is going to be given by this line over here, which is given by uh, y is equal to 1 minus x and by this line over here, which is given by uh, 2x minus 1. And if I'm going to set, uh, so since that is going to be intersection point, then that means y coordinate, y coordinate is going to be the same. So to find the intersection points, I set y coordinates equal to each other. So I'm gonna have 2x minus 1 is equal to 1 uh, minus x. So then I'm gonna have 3x is equal to 2. So x is equal to 2 over 3. But then since I know that uh, y is equal to 1 minus x, then from here we'll follow that y minus 2 over 3 is equal to 1 over 3. So that's, that's why point B coordinates are going to be 2 over 3 and 1 over 3. And you can uh, check that the coordinates for point A is going to be 0, 1. And the coordinates for um, point C is going to be 4 over 3 and 5 over 3. And the coordinates for point D is going to be 2 over 3 and 7 over 3. So perfect. So at this point, what do we know? We know what is our region D. Sorry, what, the, what is our region R? And we also know uh, the coordinates of the vertices. So let's right now try to understand what is, our, what is going to be our transformation. So first we need to choose some point, uh, some region S. And I'm going to choose the most simplest region S because we require it to be uh, rectangular one. I'm going to choose a square that has length of the side is equal to one. And uh, for that rectangular, what do I have? I have uh, four points: zero, zero, uh, one, zero, one, one. So the idea that I'm going to use how to find the transformation, I'm going to use kind of the following concept. So think about this: we want to take the square. And under our transformation, 
we kind of going to rotate we kind of going to rotate our square and stretch it so we're going to have this square kind of this rectangular region over here so you can see that instead of taking the square i'm going kind of to parameterize the square using these vectors let's name them um like u and v so remember like coordinates u and v are going to be different uh, from the vectors u and v and the coordinates of that vector u is going to be equal to um, 1, 0. And the coordinates of the vector v is going to be equal to 0, 1. And these vectors u and v under my transformation are going to become vectors a and b in my region r. And you can see as soon as I know where how vector u is going to be mapped for to vector a, and as soon as I know how vector v is going to be mapped to vector b, then I will know how the whole square is going to be mapped to a new rectangular region. But for this, uh, when we have vector a and vector b, we need to find the coordinates of those vectors. But luckily enough, I already found my vertices, so I know that this is going to be a 0, 1. The coordinates of this point is going to be uh, 2 over 3 and 7 over 3. And the coordinate of this point is going to be uh, 2 over 3 and 1 over 3. And then you can see that the coordinates of my vector a is going to be the coordinates of the endpoint, which is 2 over 3 and 1 over 3, minus the coordinates of initial point, which is 0 and 1. So that's why the coordinates of vector a is going to be equal to 2 over 3 and negative 2 over 3. Using the same approach I can find the coordinates of the vector b which is going to be equal to 2 over 3 and 4 over 3. So right now what do I know? I know that my transformation is going to take vector 1 0 to the vector 2 over 3 and negative 2 over 3 and vector 0 1 is going to be taken to the vector 2 over 3 and 4 or 3. But how can I kind of represent that sort of transformation using a more convenient notation? If you're familiar with linear algebra, then that is going to be like the matrix of the linear transformation. If you don't familiar with linear algebra, just think about uh, instead of taking a vector 1, 0, I will think about this as a column vector 1, 0 over here. So that's why if I'm going to make a matrix with coordinates, 2 over 3, negative 2 over 3, and 2 over 3, and 4 over 3. Then you can see that whenever I'm going to plug in vector 1, 0 here, I'm going to obtain a vector 2 over 3 and, you, and negative 2 over 3, where like the first component is going to be the first row times the column. And the same way if I'm going to change this to 0, 1, then it's obvious that I'm going to get 2 over 3 and 4 over 3 as my output. So this matrix over here sends our desired vector 1, 0, and 0, 1 to vectors um, A and B. So what should we do next right now? We should write our linear transformation as x and y is equal to 2 over 3 u plus 2 over 3 v is equal, and y is equal to negative 2 over 3u plus 4 over 3v. And you think that we almost done, but the thing is, take a look for our region. This point 0, 0 is going to be sent to which point? It's going to be sent to this point A with coordinate 0, 1. And so that means that transformation it's not actually going to be a linear transformation, it's going to be a fine transformation. And it's going to send, uh, it so this like x and y must send uh, 0 and 0 to point 0 and 1. And this can happen, oh, uh, and this can happen when u and v are going to simultaneously 0. So how do I need to change my transformation? I just need to add uh, plus 1 to my y component because you can see if you're gonna have u and v is 0 then your output is exactly is going to be 0 1 okay so uh, right now we have 
the possible like we not the possible we figure out what is our transformation but as soon as you get some sort of answer you always need to check that your answer is correct so what do we have we have that our transformation is x is equal to 2 over 3 uh, u plus uh, 4 2 over 3 v and y is going to be equal to minus 2 over 3 u plus 4 over 3 v plus 1 so to figure out that let's take a look uh, we will know that this line over here then is going to go to this line over here to check that let's take the parameterization of this line l so if i'm going to take my line l then parameterization of l is going to be given uh, u is equal to t b is equal to zero and t changes between 0 and 1. So if I'm going to take right now this parameterization and plug in inside my transformation, then what I'm going to obtain? I'm going to obtain that uh, x is equal to 2, 3 over t plus 0, uh, y is equal to minus 2 over 3 t plus 1. And t changes between 0 and 1. And if we are now I'm going to add left hand side left hand sides and right hand sides i'm going to obtain that x plus y is equal to one and x plus y is equal to one is exactly is y is equal to one minus x and when we have y is equal to one minus x it's exactly this going to be our equation over here which exactly describes the line over here and you can see when t is going to change between zero and one that means my x is going to change between zero and two uh, over 3 and that is exactly that it is given as our point when x changes between 0 and 2 over 3 so I did the check only for the one of the line you can do the same for the all other four lines or just to see where is my map where is my point uh, 1 1 for example is going to map and if you're going to plug in 1 1 here you're going to have uh, 4 over 3 which is exactly as x component of this point and now you're going to have negative 2 over 3 plus 2, 4 over 3, which is 2 over 3, and plus 1, which is 3 over 3, which and that is going to give you 5 over 3, which is also the, is going to be a component of the point C. And that's it. That's uh, uh, By doing this, we, we figure out the linear transformation where u and v are going to, be, are going to belong to this unit square that is going to transform that unit square into this interesting region. And let's do as a summary what we did. We uh, figure out what is our region R. We found the coordinates of the vertices. Then we uh, recognize that if I'm going to take uh, any like kind of rectangular region, then that rectangular region is given by two vectors. And that if I want to know how my rectangular region is going to change, it's enough to figure out how my vectors are going to change. I did that uh, by taking my vertices and figuring out the coordinates of A and B. Then I either use some knowledge from linear algebra or just give an intuitive explanation why we can represent that as a matrix times some column vector. And then I figure out what is my matrix by knowing the by by knowing the coordinates of vectors A and B. I plug in them into the matrix, but then remember that my origin is going to be sent somewhere. So that's why I'm going to add extra factor one over here. And as soon as I got my transformation, I just need to check, to double check that I didn't do any arithmetic mistakes by uh, taking the parameterization of the original sides of my region uh, in UV coordinate system and seeing how it's going to be mapped and if it's going to be mapped to my region R in XY coordinate system. And as a bonus, let me show you solution for the problem 13. So for the problem 13, we given the region R that is going to be a region between two circles with radius one and the radius of square root of two in the first quadrant. So that, that's a, going to be my region R. And then I want to find my region uh, S. So first, like remember that when we have uh, Cartesian coordinates uh, and when we have circle, we can use polar uh, parameterization. So in other words, I can say like that my X be U cosine V and Y is equal to U sine V. And then you, we need to figure out what is uh, boundaries for U and boundaries for V. But take a look that u in this case is going to be what is going to be my radius and my radius changes between uh, 1 and square root of 2 so that means u over here is also going to change between 1 and square root of 2 
and my V is going to be angle. So for angle, I know that first quadrant, I have my bounds between zero and pi over two. So that is going to be my V. So right now you can see that our region S is going to be just with that rectangular. And so the only thing that we need to check, we again need to check that uh, each side is going to be mapped the corresponding side in the region R. So that's why if I'm going to set V is equal to zero, so I'm going to take uh, this side, then my image is going to be x is equal to u and y is equal to 0 because sine of v is 0, uh, sine of 0 is 0 and cosine of 0 is 1. And u changes between 1 and square root of 2 because we have this region here. And that is exactly going to be parameterization of that side. But if I'm going to take parameterization of this side, then I'm going to have that u is equal to 1. But if u is equal to 1, I'm going to have 1 cosine v times 1 sine v. And that is going to be exactly parameterization of a circle. Uh, in the first quadrant because v changes between 0 and pi over 2. So that's why I'm going to have the parameterization of this side here. And so finally you can see that this is exactly is going to be our parameterization of region R where uh, region S is going to be given by this rectangular.